हेलो फ्रेंड्स वी हैव सीन कपल ऑफ वीडियोस अप टू दिस पॉइंट एंड एज आई कमिटेड इन अवर अर्लियर वीडियोस दैट डे बाय डे आई विल बी प्रोड्यूसिंग मोर एंड मोर लर्निंग टॉपिक्स फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू सो टुडे वी हैव डिसाइडेड दैट वी शुड स्टार्ट विथ लोन्स विच इज इंडीड वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर अवर एग्जामिनेशन सो लेट्स मूव फर्दर एंड अंडरस्टैंड हाउ इट एक्चुअली गोज now let us first of all understand the marks allocated to this particular topic for examination 1 to 4 we understand that it it would have 3 to 4 marks and yes as far as exam 5 is concerned it would have 4 uh, marks right so indeed this topic is very important and uh, if you are fortunate enough you can expect couple of questions on loan uh, in exam 1 to 4 and at least a question in examination 5 and if you are fortunate enough you will be getting two such questions in both the case studies so we simply cannot afford to ignore this topic so this is part 1 wherein we'll understand some of the basic mechanics of loans and in the uh, second video which i am going to publish soon uh will be understanding further aspects of loan calculations and recent trends in fpsb questions fine now this is the technology which i recommend i personally use texas ba2 plus over casio calculator because simply this is better in terms of tools functions and superiority of technology so i recommend this one now i'll also show where uh, the amort function Uh, is available in our calculator so this is where we can see a mod so every time we have to use uh, this button first second and then press pv button so a mod function uh, gets open wherein we find out p1 p2 these are two important things for us which i am going to show how do we do this okay quickly move further and take a quick question a is planning to borrow 10000 so this is the amount of loan period is 5 years with interest rate of 12 percentage compute the amount of loan installment and prepare the amortization schedule fine so if we are using financial calculator as of now kesho is also okay uh, we can say pv equals to 10000 n equals to 5 you can also cash the rate here that is equal to 12 and simply find out p and t and the answer would be 2774 now very interesting which mode are you going to pick up now usually we understand that we borrow money today and installment starts after a period so unless otherwise suggested in the question default mode which we should assume for loan computation is end mode it is different from investments so we assume and mode here make a note of it and this is the installment amount now let us also understand how do we prepare the loan amortization schedule in traditional manner uh, for the first year here we have not taken monthly we have taken annually so in the first year our opening balance is 10000 on which interest has been calculated at the rate of 12 percentage makes it <coughs> 1200 installment amount is 2774 this installment amount can be broken down into two first component is interest another component is capital so from 2774 if i reduce interest for this particular period i get capital component so after payment of first installment this is the loan outstanding which becomes opening balance for second installment and this process would go on since i am dealing with decimals here i have some balance available but yes practically if you are using financial calculators it should be zero fine so this is how we can use uh, amortization schedule now how to do this using financial calculator so i erase everything here if i say i i am opening amort function now you use, use this particular function p1 i am keeping is 1 and p2 here is 5 so p1 is the point of start of the range and p2 where the range ends so logically you can see i am asking calculator to let me know the different components from year 1 to year 5 hence it will let us know different components in this particular range that is interest amount balance which we have paid our balance outstanding that is also very important component and principal component which we have paid so, but this range is very very important we have suggested calculator 
that you should start from first installment and should end at five, fifth installment. So in our example, we have got only five installments. So having done this, it will suggest me in the interest component total of all the interest amounts, this installment, sorry, this is the total it will suggest. Apart from that principal component, so it will also suggest total of the principal component. So it would become 10,000 here and outstanding balance it would show 0. So this is the way to go and this function is indeed very, very important for our examination. So uh, move further and say for example, I say P1 is equal to 2 and P3 uh, or and P2 equals to 3. So, what do you feel like? It is going to suggest me interest, principal and all those components of which two in installments? Obviously, between installment 2 and 3. So, if I say interest, which calculator is going to suggest me is going to be total of this two. Balance, balance would be after payment of installment number 3. So, this is the balance it would show me and principal component will be once again total of this two. So, I hope you are now very, very clear with this calculation. So, this is going to be really important for us. Let us move further and take this question. This has been commonly asked question in our examination and it is also available in the sample paper of FPSB. So, let us understand how do we solve this. Now, quickly we understand I have uh, broken down this question in different bullet points and that is how I ask my students to read the questions because they are really long. Mr. A had taken a loan of 40 lakh in July 2010 at a floating rate of interest of 10 percentage per annum and tenor is 20 years. Further what has happened? Uh, the company has increased the interest rate to 10.75 percentage and it is effective from January 12. Now, he is willing to refinance the loan which is available at 10.25 percentage from a bank and yes there is some processing fee involved. Now what they have exactly asked us this I am going to read thoroughly what absolute amount he stands to save in the remaining tenor if the outstanding loan amount at the end of March 2012 is refinanced so that new loan terminates as, as per original tenor. So what is very important here? is this one original tenor. Okay. So, first of all, we have to find out installment from this particular para. So, what is the loan amount? Present value is equal to 40 lakh. We quickly write it. N, what is the period of loan? 20. Since it is paid monthly, I will take straight away to 40. Now, this is very important point here. In our examination, usually investment rates I will just write here investment rates are all effective rates and uh, loan rates are always nominal rate. So, since this is nominal rate, this 10 percentage I can easily divide it by 12 and I find out PMT in this particular case. So, it becomes my amount of installment. Now, what is the next date suggested to me? It is January 2012. So, I have to now amort the loan because rate is changing from January 12. So, I have to amort this loan for 18 months starting from July and ending at December 11. Yes, I can also write it. So, I am paying installment for this period say July 10 to December 11. So, it makes it total 18 months. I find out balance there, understand and after finding the balance, I will recalculate the EMI at new rate and considering the case, my EMIs are not going up. So now let us understand the solution. This is what FPSB has suggested and this is Excel based solution. So quickly look at this, how Excel suggested, this is the rate, this is the period, this is the present value. Uh, future value and this is rather PMT, they have kept it 0 and this is which mode? End mode. Now, as I suggested, loan would always carry end mode. So, here in this particular part, we were supposed to find out PMT. 
Now look at this, the same PMT happens to be 38,601. As I said, we have to amort this loan for 18 months. So now you can see, outstanding loan at the end of December 11 is 38,98,160. Now what is happening is, rate is going up, rate is going up. So I will take this amount straight as PV. I by Y will become uh, 10.75 by 12. Now very interestingly the question suggested once again I am highlighting this that it has to loan has to terminate as per the original tenor. So usually what happens when interest rate changes number of installment changes this I am going to show in our second part of calculation not now but here in this particular case our loan has to get over in total 240 months. So now N should be 240 and already we have paid 18 installments. So we find out new PMT that is going to be the installment amount for the remaining period. Now what has further happened? One of the bank has also suggested uh, that you can refinance the loan. That means you can, uh, you can repay existing and take another loan at 10.25 percentage. But yes, don't forget this. This is also to be paid. And this is happening from which month? End of March. So now you can start counting. Your new rate would be paid for in the month of January, February and March. So you are going to pay total three more installments and then you are going to refinance it. Okay, move further. I find out new PMT and that new installment amount with uh, new rate is going to be this one. So it is 40,516. Now I have to quickly amort this loan. So say amort this loan for say P1 is equal to 1, P2 is equal to 3, I find out a balance. So that balance would be this amount. So this is the outstanding balance on at the end of March 2012. Correct? Having found this balance, we have to now refinance it. So this is the new loan which we are going to get and on that we need to pay processing fee of 1%. So this is the processing fee as it has been suggested. Now we have to find out installment on our newly sanctioned loan. So say this becomes what? PV. And we have 240 months as a constraint, 18 has already been paid in the first part and we have paid remaining 3. So now total number of installments have been, it is 240 minus 18 minus 3. Okay, I by Y, it is new rate, uh, that is 10.25 by 12 and I find out PMT, that is going to be for new loan. So this uh, netting becomes 219. So you find out new installment and that new installment happens to be 39,245. That's it. So now we are concluding this particular question. This says that my original installment was 40,516. I reduced the new installment amount that is 39,245. There is a difference. That difference indicates what? Savings per installment multiply with 219. Because these are the installments which I am going to pay in future. So multiplied with savings. And then from that, whatever comes out, I will reduce one more charge. This is one percentage processing fees that is 38,812. And the balancing number or say net amount is our final answer. So he tends to save this much amount. Fine. So this is how we can understand the basic calculations of loan. As I promised, I will be suggesting some more topics and this is part one of loan. So we'll, we shall be recording more and more sessions on loans. So keep watching our videos and if you are liking it, don't forget to subscribe it. Thank you.